Hey guys, it's Javier Liu, and uh, for my ethical hacking class, today I will be showing you guys how to use the social engineering toolkit. So here are some topics that we're going to be cover covering. Uh, how to clone a site and retrieve username and passwords. Uh, and then there will be a couple methods in how to do that. And then also how to create a VNC attack uh, through a PDF attachment on an email. And then afterwards I'll show you how to uh, how you can look at emails uh, before you actually open them to know who exactly sent them and uh, if they are legit and what uh, what attachments are actually on the email itself. Okay, so let's get started with Backtrack. All right, so uh, to begin, we have to go down to Applications, go over to Backtrack, Exploitation Tools, uh, then you go to Social Engineering Tools, and there you will see Social Engineering Toolkit. And we'll go ahead and uh, and run that. So as you notice, uh, social engineering toolkit is uh, done through command prompt. So everything, uh, once again, is is through the command prompt. There's no GUI for it. Uh, well, and I don't have it installed, anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, and get started. So here you see uh, there are seven options in the beginning that you can uh, you can choose. You can do uh, social engineering attacks. You can do fast track. Penetration testing, third-party modules, and then you can update the Metasploit framework, the Social Engineering Toolkit, as well as the, the configurations for Social Engineering Toolkit. And lastly, you also have the uh, if you have if you need any help or if you want to see the credits or anything else about it, you can go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and type in one to view all the different attacks that uh, this program lets you do. Okay, so. Here you have spear phishing attack vectors, you have the website attacks, which we'll be covering. You have uh, to create a payload and listener, you have mass mailer attack, you have Arduino-based attack vectors, SMS spoofing, and uh, as well as you can create uh, fake AP points. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and we're going to start with uh, the website attack vector. So we'll go ahead and type in two. Okay, so here are different methods uh, that you can go about uh, on attacking a website so what we're going to basically be doing is creating a fake website and then uh, getting the username and passwords for these websites that, that people use on a day-to-day -day basis so we're going to go ahead and uh, and use three which is a credential harvester attack method so what will happen is uh, is basically people will try to sign in to their to their accounts of this website and uh, we will be receiving their username and their passwords. Okay, so here are three different options that you can go about to create this website. Uh, the first one that we're going to be using is the, the web templates that are built into the actual social engineering toolkit. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and click one. And then here it's going to ask you to, uh, to enter the IP address of the, uh, the listener. So that's your IP address. So we're going to go ahead and type that in. And uh, oh, I forgot to mention that the way this works usually is uh, you would have to go into the, uh, the person's computer and or, or the router and you can change the host file. And, um, and, and generally that's how, how you would be able to get the, the information that we're about to use. Um, as, as you'll see later on that I will be using my own IP address so that uh, I can show you the examples of this. But anyways, back to this. Um, as you can see here, it asks you which website it is that you want to use. So uh, for here, we're going to go ahead and just use uh, a Gmail. So we're going to go ahead and type in two. And just like that, it created uh, a template for it. It's already made. So we're going to go ahead and, and go to Firefox. And we will type in the IP address. And then at the end, put colon 80. So that way uh, we'd be able to get it. So there we go. Here's the uh, the fake Gmail site that that we created, and here you know the username, the password, and uh, you know if you go to the actual Gmail, you know, if you go to gmail.com, it will look something similar to it. You see, so they look similar. You know, if if you're not paying, you know, too much attention, you might notice, or you might not notice rather that uh, that it's not exactly the same. So we'll go ahead and type in the username and password. So for here, username, we're just going to type in John Smith. And password will be password. 
So when you go to sign in, you notice that it actually redirects you to the actual Gmail site. And uh, on the left, the terminal, you can see here that it, uh, it gives you the username and password that were entered. So, uh, you know, as soon as they, they, uh, they enter in the username and password, you know, they'll be redirected and they'll think, oh, you know, something might have just happened, gone wrong, that, uh, you know, this thing just didn't, uh, didn't, the request didn't go through or something. So they'll go ahead and they'll sign in. And what they won't know is that it was a fake website and that you actually got their, uh, their login credentials. So we'll go ahead and and restart social engineering toolkit so we can go on using the uh, the next method. Okay, so once again, social engineering attacks, website attack vectors, uh, credential harvester, and then this time we'll be using the site cloner. And then uh, once again, it asks you to put in the listener's IP address. So this will be your IP address once again. Okay, and then now it asks you to enter the URL of the, the site that you want to clone. So for the second example, we will use Bank of America. Okay, we'll hit enter, and now it's uh, over here. It creates the uh, the fake page, and so now it's it's finished. So we'll go ahead and, and go back to the browser, open up a new tab and we will once again type in the IP address okay there you go Bank of America now over here I have the actual Bank of America website so we can compare them and as you can see very similar once again uh, you know there are some differences to it but uh, I mean they, they, they look really close if, if you're not paying attention uh, you know <laughs> someone might catch you so just just be careful and uh, on how you log into everything. So we're gonna go ahead and once again John Smith and sign in. Okay, so once again it redirects you right back to the actual Bank of America site. And uh, you know, once again, if if they're not, if it's someone who doesn't know, they might think, okay, this thing just. Uh, timed out or something so you know they'll re-enter their credentials but once again over here even though we didn't get to go to the passcode but we did get some information uh, you know that he entered there so here we can see the user ID is John Smith uh, we didn't get to get to the password because Bank of America has uh, uh, as soon afterwards it, it takes you to, uh, to enter your passcode but here you can see where the uh, the location is right here, the state. So CA, so you know that's California. So you know you know you were able to get a little bit from this. Okay, and uh, next I will show you how to use the the uh, email attack. So we'll go ahead and we'll go back. And uh, press 99 to return to the main menu. And then now we will go to, once again, we'll type in, uh, or this time we will go and type in 1 for spear phishing attack vectors. Okay, so now it gives you three different options that you can do. You can create uh, the mass email attack, you can create a file format payload, or uh, social. you can create a template um, for, for, for the spear phishing attacks. So we're going to go ahead and type in 1 to perform a, an email attack. Okay, and then it gives you, you know, 20 different options of uh, of what attack it is that you want to create. Um, for this one, we're going to be doing the Adobe PDF uh, embedded executable, uh, which is number 11. So, you know, we'll go ahead and do that. And then it asks you um, if you want to use your own PDF. So, if you have your own PDF with an executable in it, uh, you can go ahead and, and, and do that. Or you can use a, a blank PDF that they provide you. So we're going to go ahead and do the, the blank PDF. And then it asks you what you want the uh, the PDF to actually do. So you have some options. You can do the reverse TCP. Uh, you can do Windows Interpreter Reverse. You can do uh, the reverse VNC, which is what we're actually going to be doing. You know, so you, you have some options here. 
and we're going to go ahead and type in 3 to do the uh, reverse VNC. And then once again, it asks you for the, uh, for the IP address of the listener, which is your IP address. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And then it asks you what port it is that you want to connect back onto. So um, by default, it's going to be port 443, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll enter that. And now it is creating the uh, actual PDF uh, so that it can attach it to an email uh, with a reversible VNC. So uh, we'll go ahead and wait for that to, uh, to continue. So there we go. It created the uh, the PDF with the the payload, and then here it's asking you if you want to rename the file, if you want to keep the file how it is. So right now the file name is moo.pdf. So you can type in one to keep the file name, saying that you don't care, or you can rename the file to something else that you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rename the file actually, and uh, we're going to call it order confirmation. So that way someone uh, who sees this, they'll think that it's a, a PDF of an order that they made. Um, so what we want to do, if we want to do a single email or a mass attack. So for this one, we're just going to do one email. We're not going to go out and attack multiple people. Um, and then it asks you if you want to use a predefined template, if you want to create your own. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, use the predefined template. So we'll type in one. And then here you can see it asks you which template it is that you want to use and uh, you can see all the different ones there you know you have strange uh, these would be the topics those would be like strange internet usage from your computer and new updates uh, and you can see the 11 is order confirmation so we're going to go ahead and use that one because it matches the uh, the name of our PDF so we'll go ahead and use that and then now it's asking you which whose email it is that you want to send this email to so I'm going to go ahead and type in this email And now it's saying uh, uh, if you want to use your own, uh, you know, basically who you're going to be sending it from. So I'm going to go ahead and use the one from the Gmail account. And you type in your uh, the email. User, it's asking here for uh, the username that they will see. So I'm going to go ahead and type in me and the password uh, for your email. And now it's asking if you want to. Uh, mark this as a high priority email or not, so we're going to go ahead and press no. And it says unable to deliver, give us some error. Oh, no, I think it's sent. Okay, so we'll go ahead and type in yes to set up the listener already, and then we'll check the email in a minute. Let's go ahead and uh, open up, check to see the email. Okay, as we see here. It's starting to uh, to create the listening. So that way, as soon as they open it, you'll know because uh, it will be looking for for the open attachment. So we'll go ahead and open here. Um, doesn't look like if it uh, email sent. So that's fine. I mean, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll just. Uh, We'll go here and, and we're going to type in the IP address once again. And uh, since the port that it's listening to is 443, we're going to go ahead and type in that port. We're going to type in colon 443. And we're going to hit enter. And, well, usually what would happen is uh, it would create a VNC, which is uh, it allows you to control the computer. So uh, as you can see here, it wasn't able to run it uh, on Firefox, but... What would happen is as soon as they get the email and they open it up, the uh, the PDF it's going to automatically execute that PDF or what's behind the PDF and it will create the uh, the the running executable. Um, 
which will be the VNC so, so you can take control of their computer okay and lastly what I wanted to show you guys in this video was um, basically how to protect yourself from from these emails you know when you, when you look at all these emails you don't really know uh, who sent it to you, you know, here for example Dr. Oz we don't know you know exactly who this is so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and click here view message source so now what this gives us is gives us all that is behind the uh, actual message so without actually opening the email and letting anything run we get to see what it contains so right here return path you can see this this is uh, the email that sent or the, or the website that sent this email and then you can see when it was received and right here you have the the IP address I think that one's from the sender okay so here you have uh, you know the message you hear here you can see who it's from you know the the, the name you know Dr. Oz but this is the actual email that sent it um, this is the, the subject here how to method how to lose seven pounds per week and then if you keep on scrolling down you'd be able to see the uh, the body in the actual email you see here this uh, it has some links on the uh, on the website and if there were any attachments on this uh, particular email it would actually come up here you know it'll say attachment and it'll, it'll, it'll let you know what the attachment is whether it's a PDF or a picture or what it is so another thing I wanted to show you guys is if you get this IP address right here which is from the sender you can actually copy this and if you're not sure who this sender is you can you can go here to uh, you type in what is my IP address dot com forward slash IP lookup so what you do what this does is uh, you can actually look up an IP address and see where this IP address was actually located so when you click on here it gives you you know the host name right here you can see it right there that's the exact host name that's given right here mail 324 or 32c40 dot carrier zone right here same exact one and then you can actually see where they're located so it gives you the longitude and latitude of the uh, the location from where the email was actually sent so in this case it was from uh, Fort Lauderdale Florida and basically if you don't know who this was if, if you don't know anyone from this particular uh, this particular area or why they're sending you this email then you know not to open this email you know, so this is one way that you can protect yourself from, from emails you know if you don't recognize the person you can go ahead and do this you can uh, do the IP lookup right here just to verify and then if you're not sure you can actually get these latitude and longitude coordinates and you can actually go to Google Maps and enter them and it'll give you the exact place from uh, from where the email or uh, the email was sent so that's something that's really neat well guys that's it for today I uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thank you thank you for watching